All right, welcome back, guys. This is getting into the more advanced portions of this course, the technology for online education. We're talking about OBS for educators, open broadcaster software. Yes, it's really designed for live streaming and it's designed for esports and gaming, but it's also the perfect tool to mix and match video clips into beautiful online videos that have a polished look and feel. By the way, it's totally free. And everything in this course that we've talked about is free. We just talked about Pixlr, a free kind of Photoshop digital editing software. Now we're gonna talk about OBS, which is a totally free video production software. So you can get it for your Mac, you can get it for your PC. It's not cloud-based, so it won't work on a Chromebook. You will need a PC, a Mac, or a Linux computer, but still, it's totally free and very powerful. So let's get into it. So in this video, we are going to familiarize you with OBS because we're gonna take it a step further in our next video and we're gonna actually apply our learning. We're gonna apply the PNG file we made in our previous videos to creating some awesome video productions for your online courses. Now, where do you get OBS? You go to obsproject.com. You can get it for Mac, you can get it for Windows, and you can get it for Linux. Download it and you will be good to go to get started. In fact, there is a startup wizard that will get you set up very quickly and easily. Now, just to kind of familiarize you with this, there is a middle area here, okay? This is that center area. This area here is what you're working on. You can click and drag anything around there. You can have a picture, you can have a video source. We're gonna bring in a webcam, a document camera, and that PNG file we made into a few different scenes. But it's important to understand that down here are scenes. So this is where we can actually organize different collections of media and with the click of a button, change what we're doing. And so that's important because we can start with a webcam and then transition to a different layout, which might include a document camera. It might include a PowerPoint. And then we can transition to another scene that might just be a video clip. And the whole time we can have our audio in the center audio mixer as our voiceover. And so we can have three, maybe four different scenes that will really create a more engaging video and we can also use video clips that we've already created or maybe have been submitted by students into one larger project that's much more enjoyable to watch. Now at the top, there's a top menu system. Now we're not gonna go into the entire OBS software itself because it, there's a lot that it can do. And in fact, I actually wrote an entire book called the Unofficial Guide to Open Broadcaster Software. Now, I am going to give you this book for free. There's going to be a PDF copy of this in the Udemy course, so you can get started with this, use it as a reference. You can also purchase the, um, the physical copy on Amazon, and I have an entire online course just for OBS. So I'm not gonna monopolize this course on going over OBS, but I will give you enough of a tutorial to start using it and applying it for your online education courses. So keep in mind, this book is a great resource for you to learn more about OBS. So that top menu system is gonna have a lot of stuff that we won't go over, but we will go over how to record a great video and you can see the recording button here. And we'll also go over the settings area a little bit so that we can talk about making sure that all your settings are right for creating good videos. Now, as soon as you download OBS, there's an automatic configuration wizard, and it's gonna ask you one simple question. Would you like to optimize your setup for streaming, or would you like to optimize your setup for video recording? We're gonna choose video recording. I don't think many educators will be live streaming, but you can use this tool to live stream in the future. In fact, you can use this tool to send really cool advanced video into Google Meet or Zoom. We're not gonna go over that in this video, but it can be done and we'll go over it. We do go over it in the more advanced OBS course that I also offer on Udemy. 
Now, in general, when we're doing this auto configuration wizard, we're just going to choose 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. This is your base canvas resolution. This is also the same resolution that we designed our PNG file for in um, Pixlr. So you'll see that uh, more and more. It's just a, a 16 by 9 widescreen video format that works on almost every television and computer and smartphone in kind of landscape mode. Now, this is what we're eventually going to be looking at, OBS in studio mode. And I want you to kind of think about this. There's two screens here. One is a preview screen and one is an output screen. Now, we can use OBS in two ways. We can use it with a single screen, which is actually how I'm going to teach you how to use it. But I want you to know that there is a studio mode which allows you to do a little bit more flexibility um, of seeing what you're transitioning to and transitioning to it with a transition button, like a fade. Um, but we're not going to go over that in this course. I just wanted you to know about that. And I want you to know about those scenes over here. We talked about kind of creating different scenes that we can transition to. And then inside of each scene is sources. And sources, again, are pictures, videos, webcams, document cameras, things like that. And there's a layering system. So we can have one thing on top of another, and we'll go over all of that. And there's also the ability to quickly hide a, a source or a scene with that little I button there. Now, at the top, you know, there's that file uh, drop-down menu there. That's where we can configure the settings, or we can click the settings button in the bottom right. Uh, and then we talked about the scene sources and the, uh, the sources area and the scenes area. Now, to add a scene or add a source, there's a little plus button. So the plus button creates a new scene or also opens up an option to add a new source, which again, could be a picture, a video, a webcam, lots of different things, a screen capture for your slide sh slides, for example. And then next to uh, those in the sources area is a little cog. And so if you click a, a source and you want to edit it, let's say you want to edit the text, for example, you can click that little cog and change it. And then you have these up and down arrows, and that is how you layer information. So we're gonna layer a webcam with a document camera with a um, PNG file. So we're gonna layer them, and we would want the PNG file on top, for example, and we'll go over all of that soon. So we talked about OBS in studio mode. That's the way I like to do it. I've kind of gotten used to OBS, and I feel like I'm very good at OBS, but we can also use it with just a single uh, video in the middle, and that's the way we're going to demonstrate it because we don't need to be overly complicated for this. Now, at a high level, what I'm going to teach you to do today is to create a video with multiple scenes. And so scene one is going to be an intro video clip, and I'm actually going to create that video clip in this video, and in our next video, we'll use it. Uh, we're going to create a dynamic layout, and that is going to be like you've seen today where there's a webcam in the left and a PowerPoint in the right. Then we're going to create a second dynamic layout that we'll transition to, and then we'll create an outro video. And the outro video is going to be a webcam source. So we're going to have a webcam, we're going to have an intro video clip, and we're going to have two dynamic layouts. And we're going to transition to those. Each one of those is a scene, and we're going to transition to them. Now, another idea that I want you guys to wrap your head around is also using B-roll. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple different B-roll things as well. And I'm going to use some this as a history lesson. So I'm going to download two B-roll video clips from history and just play them inside of this entire video that we're recording. So hopefully this is making sense. We are taking multiple video sources and pieces of videos and turn them into one video that is much more engaging and dynamic for our students to watch. So uh, one of the things I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna record an intro video clip with my cell phone. I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna email it to myself and that's gonna be the intro to our video. Next, I'm going to download two pieces of B-roll. And those B-rolls uh, are going to be, you know, interesting video clips of history so that we can kind of explain history through a video clip that's available either on YouTube, which we could, I'll show you how to do YouTube. 
And then I'll show you a video clip that maybe you've received from you know, your class curriculum or the textbook you're using. I'm gonna download one from Videoblocks. Then we're gonna transition to a couple different dynamic layouts and finish with a webcam where we're talking to the students directly to our webcam. Now it sounds complicated, but this is a very dynamic way that you can create videos and it's kind of a rinse, wash, repeat process. So once you understand this process, it can be customized to fit every different lesson and course that you teach. That's what makes it so exciting for me. You can look at our catalog of videos and you'll see that the content's always different, but our production quality is always quite high and it's designed in this way. And I've actually worked on this for years and I wanna give it to you in this course so that you can really understand it and use it. Now, the basic setup is essentially a webcam, and a microphone. They're connected to my computer via USB, and we use the OBS software to bring those sources together. That's all we're talking about here. We might even just have a webcam which has a built-in microphone, right? We don't even need that USB microphone. In fact, we might be using, and this will be the demonstration today, a USB webcam and a document camera. The webcam has a microphone built in, so we don't actually need to have that additional microphone. We'll use the microphone in the webcam connected via USB, and we'll use a document camera connected via USB. Very simple stuff. Now, if you'd like to take your learning further, I want to obviously share with you the unofficial guide to open broadcaster software, but there is actually one other book that I have written that could really help as well. This is called the Accelerated Broadcast Club Curriculum. Now, I am going to, again, link to this below. I have an entire course on this. They actually kind of uh, were designed at the same time, as you can see, they're very similar. One says OBS, one says ABC2 for Accelerated Broadcast Club Curriculum. I don't want to overly complicate this course, but I have a lot of great material on this. And a lot of schools have broadcast clubs. A lot of schools have media departments, and this book is great for the media department. And this book goes into even more detail about using these tools for live streaming school announcements, morning announcements, and creating something that looks like this which even mimics kind of the news, right? And modern, modern news. So you can take it that far if you wanna learn about our Broadcast Club curriculum tutorials. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, now you have had a good example of you know, what OBS is and how we're gonna use it. Now, I just wanna go ahead and do this with you guys right now. I am going to go to my smartphone and I'm gonna share this with you in an interesting way. I'm gonna share this with you using my document camera. So here's my document camera here, and you guys can actually see it right here, okay? You guys have seen a smartphone before, right? This is an iPhone. I'm gonna click that camera button there, and I'm gonna choose the video option, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, uh, one more important, important part here, I'm gonna flip the image so I can see myself, okay? Now, I am gonna record a very short video for this project, a quick introduction video to History 101. I'm just gonna do it with you guys, and you'll see, and then I'll email it to myself, and we'll use it in our next course, so here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to this course. Today we are talking about History 101. I can't wait to get in with you all. Let's get started. That was a 10 second video. I'm gonna email that to myself and we're gonna use it in our online course. One more thing that's important here is I'm gonna take you guys to videoblocks.com. Now, you could get this from YouTube. You can get video from so many different places. And I'm just gonna type in history because we don't have any specific information here. But let's, yeah, let, let, let's take this vintage map here. I really like this, this looks cool. Oh, look at that, look, there's, you know what? Let's, let's, let's type in Philadelphia because we were gonna do a little history on Philadelphia here. Um, there's City Hall, kind of like that. Why don't we do City Hall? And, oh, I gotta log in to get that. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in and get that file, and I'm gonna download it. There we go. 
Now, again, you might, I don't know exactly where you're going to get your video files. I'm getting mine from video blocks and we're going to use two videos, right? We got the little intro video that I made with my cell phone, super kind of, you know, unique and fun and personal with my cell phone. And then we're going to have some professional video clips that we're going to use from online where we've gotten them and we're going to mix them together in our next course video. This is going to be an interesting one. I can't wait to do this with you guys. Let's get started.